Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Reverend Jessica, the minister at Kitsap Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. Welcome to our online service in Zoom webinar. I invite you all to follow along in the order of service, and I'm going to put that link in the chat. If you are phoning in today, welcome. We have a Zoom coffee hour after the service, and the number to call in is the same number that you use to access this webinar, but the meeting ID is 438-451-134, and the password today is JUSTICE, capital J-U-S-T-I-C-E. And I will put that in the chat as well. Okay. We would like to start today by acknowledging that the land on which we all live is the Aboriginal territory of the Suquamish, the Sklalem, and the Skokomish people. They have lived in harmony with the lands and waterways along Washington's Central Salish Sea for thousands of years. These tribes still live here and protect the land and waters of their ancestors for future generations, as promised by the Point Elliott Treaty of 1855. Now please join me in our call to worship Circle Round for Freedom. Circle round for freedom, circle round for peace, for all of us imprisoned, circle for release, circle for the planet, For the children of our children, keep the circle whole. Circle round for freedom. Circle round for peace. For Children of 
Wow. What a spectacular call to worship, eh? Good morning. Welcome to the Kitsap Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. Whomever you are and wherever you have come from, or whatever your comfort level with modern technology, for this hour, we are here one gathered congregation and all are welcome. My name is Bonner Sams, also known as The Bonster, and I serve on the worship committee as well as the social justice committee and also our second Friday film series committee. Our worship leader this morning is our minister, Reverend Jessica Starr Rockers. I'd like to welcome any vis visitors. Please introduce yourself in our chat section. We welcome more interaction with all during our after service coffee hour. The link to the Zoom coffee hour is in the chat box. You will also need the password, which is justice with a capital J. The announcements on our, are on our webpage, www.kuuf.org, or our weekly email letter, The Candle. <clears throat> and now you are invited to light a personal chalice or candle in your home as we read this chalice, as we read these, as I read these chalice lighting words. Love cannot be bought or sold. It does not make a profit. Love does not hide from truth. Love dives deep. Love takes on flesh. Love is queer. Love is platonic. Love is erotic. Love is asexual. Love confronts evil. Love delights in pleasure. Love touches and weeps and flirts and feeds and creates. Love is risky. Love challenges systemic evil in all of its forms. Love is simple, but not easy. Love is collective. Love rises up. Love apologizes. Love believes. Love corrects. Love holds accountable. Love pays reparations. Love heals. Love tells its story. Love embraces everyone, every creature, every creation. It knows us intimately, it holds us collectively. Love transcends, transcends every boundary that seeks to confine it. It will not tolerate violence in its name. It does not harm, it only sets free. Please join in singing our opening hymn, Lift Up the People by Mike Benefee. Elena Hemingway and Brian Kinney, uh, the words will appear on our screen.
walk with the people, walking hand in hand. We gonna stand with the people, the people who take a stand. Please join me in the spoken affirmation. The words will appear on your screen. We gather as a caring community, seeking life's deeper meanings. We value diversity and affirm the worth of all living things. We strive to speak truth in love, to act for justice, to grow in spirit, and to care for the earth. We celebrate with open hearts and minds the creative power that sustains and transforms us. And now it is time for our morning offering. To make an online contribution, please click on the PayPal link in the chat box. You may email admin at kuuf.org to let us know if your donation is for the Kitsap UU Fellowship General Fund, the Minister's Discretionary Fund, or the Minister's Discretionary Fund to help our members in need, or our monthly charitable giving recipient, which this month is our Minister's Discretionary Fund. As the pandemic continues to affect our members and loved ones, contributing to the Minister's Discretionary Fund will help keep it robust and a viable resource for any of us while in need. Reverend Jessica encourages us to use this all important resource and to not treat it as merely a last resort. Thank you. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle around to tend these bags. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth.
Well, now it, it comes time for our children's story. So I would like to invite the children who are watching, the young and the young at heart, to maybe sit a little bit closer to the screen now. So this month is, oh good, you're my own person, my own young person. This month is Pride Month. And usually some of us celebrate by going to a pride parade or celebration to celebrate the rights of LGBTQ folks, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, or questioning. And I wanted to share with you some of the history of the Pride Parade because what has become a parade a celebration started as an uprising, a rebellion, a protest. And this protest took place in New York City in 1969. So I'm going to tell you this story, complete with pictures, and let me share the screen. And this story is told from the perspective of the building itself, the building that was eventually called the Stonewall Inn. Stonewall, a building, an uprising, a revolution. Two stable houses side by side. For more than a hundred years, we witnessed history. Then came a night when we became part of history. We were built in the 1840s to board the horses of the affluent in New York City's Greenwich Village. Inside our brick walls, horses whinnied and hammers clanged. Outside, passersby bustled as carriages rumbled on the cobblestone streets. As time passed, the wealthy residents began to move uptown, taking with them their art clubs, libraries, fine hotels, and theaters. Our neighborhood became a mecca for immigrants arriving from all around the world. Visitors made their way to Greenwich Village. Many of them stayed. Greenwich Village was changing. The smell of freshly baked bread began to waft out our windows and into the neighborhood. The roar of automobiles replaced the rumble of carriages as artists and writers moved in. The village was becoming the creative center of New York City. You can see the bakery. By 1930, our two buildings were joined together and we became Bonnie's Stonewall Restaurant. Celebrities, artisans, tourists, and local residents lunched at our tables shoulder to shoulder. Greenwich Village was a place where you could be yourself and where being different was welcome and accepted. Newness thumped in the heart of Greenwich Village in the 1950s, vibrating our windows. Musicians played on the street, jazz filled the air. Poets performed in restaurants. Artists painted in studios. 
the beat movement arrived and we witnessed it all. Leading up to the 1960s, our neighborhood welcomed gays, lesbians, transgender, and non-binary people. We were a home for people who were told that they didn't fit in or belong. In 1967, we became the Stonewall Inn. LGBTQ people from throughout the city and the country came to meet old and new friends, free to be themselves inside our walls. People young and old, transgender and non-binary, drag queens, veterans, business people, students, people of different colors, religions, and cultures gathered, chatted, laughed, and danced under our roof. Others were not accepting. They thought those who gathered within our walls were too different. We heard the whispered voices of those inside. Loving someone like yourself was illegal. Socializing together could get you arrested. Wearing the wrong clothes could land you in jail. Being gay or transgender could get you fired or kicked out of your home. Some nights we heard fists pounding on our doors, felt angry footsteps stomping across our floor and saw flashes of glaring light as the police arrested some of those inside. After each raid, those who hadn't been arrested left quietly, angrily, disappearing into the darkness. We stood tall and kept opening our doors. People kept coming. But the police raids kept coming too. We couldn't stop them. In the steaming early morning hours of June 28, 1969, under a nearly full moon, another raid began. Police officers stormed through our doors, lining up the people inside, demanding IDs, detaining some, arresting others. This time, those not arrested didn't disappear into the night. Instead, they stood defiantly in the street and on the sidewalk under our rusty sign. This time, they weren't quiet. As the ones arrested were led to police cars and patrol wagons, the anger of the growing crowd was lit. Why don't you do something, yelled one woman as she was forced into a police car. Immediately, the spark of anger grew into a smoldering resistance. Shouts and screams echoed off bricks, fists thrust in the air. The Stonewall uprising had begun. The police, shocked by the defiance of the crowd, rushed back in and barricaded themselves inside. Our friend stood outside trying to force open the doors. Our windows were shattered. Smoke drifted through our rooms. We stood firm. Years of silent anger inflamed the crowd. The police called for help and it soon arrived. The fires were extinguished. The police came back outside, but the crowd's anger was not extinguished. We want freedom, protesters shouted. The police had never seen anything like it before and it wasn't over. The Stonewall uprising continued on and off for several days and nights. This was the beginning of the LGBTQ rights movement. One year later, on June 28, 1970, people gathered outside our building to celebrate the first anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising. At first, hundreds marched, then thousands of people, young and old, transgender and non-binary, veterans, business people, students, people of different colors, religions, and cultures, and their friends and families joined to parade through the streets of New York City. 50 years later, many things are different now. Some things have changed, even some laws have changed. And every year in June, people from all over the world celebrate the movement for LGBTQ rights, a movement that has come so far and still has further to go, a movement that celebrates freedom and equality for everyone. It all began one night here at the Stonewall Inn when two old horse stables became part of history. What did you think of that story? It was great. That's a good story. And now let's sing our song. 
This is the song we sing every week, letting our lights shine, reminding ourselves to be unafraid, to be exactly who we are. And I'll try, I'll try to um, let you guys uh, do the hand gestures for it too. So follow along with William and Liam if you can remember the hand gestures. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. singing along. Okay. And now it is time for our joys and sorrows. Though we are physically distanced from one another, our hearts and our spirits remain connected. When shared together, our joys are amplified and our sorrows lessened. And I would like to honor that this past Friday was the anniversary of the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando. So I would like us to um, lift up in our prayers today, the 49 people who died that night and the 58 who were wounded, most of whom were Latinx people. Let us hold in our hearts, their families and friends and loved ones who remain in grief and heartbreak. May they be surrounded by loving community. And I also want to honor that this coming Friday is Juneteenth, an anniversary that celebrates the liberation of enslaved African Americans at the end of the Civil War. And I hold this momentous day as a joy today. And I name both of these events as evidence of our need to keep fighting for collective liberation and an end to gun violence. May we all be inspired in this time of uprising to push, vote, write, call, protest, caravan, show up and make real reform happen. And now if you have a personal joy or sorrow to share, I invite you to put that in the chat this morning as well. And I will read them aloud. We can take this moment to breathe together as I wait for those to come in. Oh, Bonner says, I'm so happy that President Trump finally succumbed to pressure and moved his rally away from the Juneteenth. And I share that with you. Uh, Jane Kornman says, our son graduated from Evergreen this past week. Congratulations. Congratulations. 
Bunny and Matthias say Rowan went to her first Black Lives Matter demonstration. Very exciting. From Beth, Reverend Dick Birdsall, who is in his last hours or days of his life, oh, prayers for Reverend Dick. He was co-founder of Rainbow Lodge from Beth's father. Sending our love and blessings to Reverend Dick. Angie, James has joy that his eighth birthday is this week on the 20th. Happy birthday, James. Jennifer Ingalls says, Ashlyn has a joy that she saw her cousins this week. We have a collective family joy for spending time in nature. Joy is for all of that. Morgan has a sorrow that his drum set is missing. Oh, I hope you find your drum set, Morgan. Kathy is joyful to be back with family. She says, I have missed the feeling you all bring to my life. So glad that you're back as well, Kathy. Annie says, I'm grateful that the Capitol Hill occupied zone exists. So peaceful and powerful. And I'm so grateful to you, Annie, for going there and witnessing um, to it. Nikki says, joy to see the growing number of humans coming together in love and support to show love and stand for justice. Yes. Oe, I've started making art again. What a wonderful joy. We're so glad. We can't wait um, for when you're ready to share it. Um, let's see. Alan and Ellen Newberg celebrated their 50th wed wedding anniversary last Thursday. How wonderful. There are so many joys and sorrows coming in that I'm hoping that I see them all. Um, so forgive me if somehow I miss yours. From Ellie Klaumenzer, joy that so many KUUF and others from the community participated in protests. And Guy, granddaughter Kayla will be attending Eastern Florida State College in the fall. Congratulations to Guy and Kayla and your whole family. How wonderful. Well, thank you everyone. Oh, joy for Kay's journey to becoming his true self. Congratulations, Kay. He's having gender affirming top surgery this Friday. His parents are so proud of their son. And we're so proud of you too, Kay. And we're with you all this week and we'll keep you in our thoughts and prayers. Joy from Beth, 81 people came to stand for Black Lives Matter in Fort Orchard on Friday, sponsored by KUF. How wonderful. Thank you so much for doing that. Well, thank you everyone for sharing. May you who shared this morning feel the love of this community surrounding you and holding you close. And for all those whose joy or sorrow is too tender to share, our hearts are with you. May the spirit of life and love bring peace to us all. Amen and blessed be.
We remember the night of the pulse shooting. Because, because we, we have, have a great memory of what unsettles us. The air in the room was still. We sat dried-eyed and waving. The grief rendering us mute. Because, because that, that is who we are. are. Queer people are trained mourners. mourners. If we're not mourning, we're waiting for it. We watched as the media called the shoe to closeted and, and charged, charged the, the queers, queers of killing, killing themselves. themselves. And we remembered coming out. And how that too was a memorial. We were told we'd be home in hell. Given, given we, we were already flaming. flaming. According to Sodom and Gomorrah, LGBT, LGBT actually, actually stands for Let Gays Be Torched. Amazing how much lead we can hold underneath all this skin. How people will weaponize our pride against us. We'll, we'll walk, walk into, into a pulsing club, club of glittered bodies and see a cemetery. cemetery because how dare these abominations give themselves voices. How dare we try celebrating living when, when we, we should, should be joyous in not being dead yet. yet. And that is how queerness works. It's, it's to, to look, look in the mirror and only see survivor's, survivor's guilt. guilt. It's to convince our ourselves we would have never been in that club but it's not just clubs that kill us it's, it's train rides high school, school classrooms, classrooms office cubicles family, family gatherings. gatherings we are a stain something to be removed something to work on to hashtag to, to feign solidarity, solidarity with. with the pulse shooter decided to kill the body the, the rest of you decide, decide to send out warning shots, shots every time you talk, talk to a queer person. person we've been listening you say we are Orlando say love is love say it might have been ugly but, but it's, it's not, not my fault. fault and then you say I don't want to see a man in a dress say Disney can't have gay characters say I might be liberal but, but not, not that, that liberal. liberal. Don't you think these opinions can grow teeth? Don't you think they bite? It's to think of the monster as an external being. Instead of seeing ourselves as a monster, the it's shooter was not, not a lone wolf. wolf. He, he was prepped, prepped trained, and, and encouraged. He's he was the, the product, product of American, American queer phobia. He, he had your opinions in the barrel. barrel. And you see how easy it is to forget a massacre. When the victims never had a seat at society's dinner table. The FDA says that the gays can't donate blood. We couldn't give of ourselves to save ourselves because, because everything, everything about, about us reeks of other. other. A year later, and Orlando is clouded with performative activism. With a red carpet rolled out for all the trauma. So when we asked for gun protection, you, you gave, gave us rainbow walkways. We asked for hormone therapy, you, you gave, gave us conversion therapy. therapy. We asked for reliable health care, you, you gave, gave us your sexuality and gender, our, our pre-existing conditions. conditions. We asked for safe housing for queer youth, you, you gave, gave us turn 18, then, then we'll talk. talk. The world doesn't welcome us. In all our glory, our, our identities have, have to be concise enough to fit into catcalls. How, How dare you call it a lifestyle if you won't let us live it? How naive of us to think that, that rainbow, rainbow flags are our emblem, emblem when rainbows fade too. As a black trans boy, I am told that silence is my birthright. That, that I, I must keep my feelings quiet. quiet. That I am girl who should bite tongue. That, that my boy is non-existent. As genderqueer teenager, I'm told that I should pay not to be misgendered. That, that, that my transness is my family's labor. labor. That respect is a luxury. And pointing it out as an attack. We, we are, are constantly, constantly met with violence, violence under the guise of unity. Orlando, Orlando will, will never be over. over. It will always be a reminder that, that where, where we, we call home does not keep us safe. Safe. And that support does not end with, with a, a rainbow, rainbow pin and, and a Facebook filter. filter. Safety for us means cis and straight people sacrificing comfort. comfort means white queer people recognizing our privilege. Means less wearing of allyship and more acting on it. Means, means we, we remember, remember that pride, pride began, began as a protest for all queer and trans people to be treated better. For all black and brown people to exist in peace and, and to recognize, recognize that 49 names will, will never, never again be spoken in to live in. And that is our responsibility to shoulder. To do better for next time. And, and next, next time is, is always right, right now. now. And so when you come for us too, you will look us in the eyes to, to recognize, recognize our, our humanity, humanity and to know that there are others just like us. Waiting for their turn to turn a club into a queer statement. To color the world our shade of brave and, and to, to dance forever and exist loudly even after. after the music ends.
of the Pulse nightclub shooting, the federal government announced the removal of non-discrimination protections for transgender and non-binary people in healthcare. This allows healthcare providers and insurance providers to deny services to transgender and non-binary individuals. To remove anyone's access to healthcare in the middle of a pandemic feels aggressive and cruel to say the least. To do it to our trans siblings during Pride Month on the anniversary of the worst attack on LGBTQ people in our nation's history is simply evil. And I don't use that word lightly, but that's what we're dealing with. And to call it anything else would not be stating the truth of the situation that we are all in. All month, we have seen an uprising unfold all over the country and all over the world. And this current uprising was really started by the Movement for Black Lives in 2014, after the police shooting of Michael Brown in Ferguson. Now, Michael Brown wasn't the first black person to be killed by state-sanctioned violence, and he wasn't the last. In fact, the names that we know have grown too numerous for me to even read them all aloud. 
But today I want to name some of our transgender siblings of color that we have lost this year. Nina Pop, Monica Diamond, Tony McDade, Dominique Remy Fells, and Raya Milton. And what are the names we will never know? Black men and women whose names are a footnote in the newspaper, transgender siblings, indigenous women who have gone missing and whose families continue to demand justice. There are too many names now. But we know one name for sure. One name continues to inspire us to action. At one of the protests I attended on Bainbridge Island as I maneuvered my way through the crowded sidewalk, everyone wearing masks and carrying signs and chanting, I was struck by the sound, George Floyd, George Floyd, George Floyd. His name chanted over and over by hundreds of people. We don't know all the names, but we know George Floyd's name. And maybe it is the pandemic, or maybe it is the heartbreaking details of George Floyd's death, or that so many of us watched it on video. But here we are, six years after Ferguson, and what started as a hashtag, Black Lives Matter, has become an uprising with the real potential to create lasting change. The kind of change that we Unitarian Universalists say we have been seeking, the kind of change we have been praying for, mobilizing for, educating ourselves for. This moment is the moment where we get to take everything we have learned, all the love that we have for one another and for humanity, all the ways we practice being in community and use it to resist hate, to resist evil, to face the truth of what we are dealing with and the ways that those of us who are white or straight or cisgender have been complicit. And we can say enough is enough. This month, Pride Month, is also the 51st anniversary of the Stonewall Rebellion, another uprising that created lasting change. But just like this moment and this uprising and the movement for Black Lives, Stonewall wasn't the first instance of LGBTQ resistance against violence. A decade before Stonewall, there is the story of several transgender women who fought back against police brutality at a cafe in San Francisco, and another group who did the same a few years later in Los Angeles. Not to mention the gay rights and lesbian rights societies founded in the 1950s who protested and marched going all the way to the White House steps to demand decriminalization of homosexuality and freedom from police violence. But Stonewall was momentous a moment when everything seemed to shift. Just like we're seeing today, everything coalesced and the wheels of change, which go back and forth, sometimes slowly, sometimes quickly, suddenly began to lurch forward, pushed by the bravery of transgender women of color like Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. A Stonewall uprising lasted several days and nights, a sustained, demand for liberation. And as Frederick Douglass once famously wrote, power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did and it never will. Find out just what any people will quietly submit to and you have found out the exact measure of injustice and wrong which will be imposed upon them. And these will continue till they are resisted with either words or blows or with both. The limits of tyrants are prescribed by the endurance of those whom they oppress. On the year anniversary of Stonewall in 1970, the first gay pride marches took place in New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. And we have seen in the 50 years since how much has changed, how much power has had to concede to the demands of the people people who have resisted with words and with their bodies. And in the same way that the resistance didn't start with Stonewall, it didn't start with George Floyd either. But it is out of this moment that we can make meaning, 
we can see this point of origin as our awakening, combined with some historical coming together of forces beyond our control, and we can seize upon it, make the most of it, and be like Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera and push the wheels of change forward. One thing we must not let happen, we must not go back. We must resist the hate that insists on denying the humanity and the very existence of those of us who are transgender and non-binary, particularly transgender and non-binary black people and people of color. This hate is everywhere. The prejudice living even in the very movement which bears its name. During the years after Stonewall, the transgender community continued to be marginalized by the larger gay community. There's a video of that first march after Stonewall in New York, and the organizers that day refused to let Sylvia Rivera onto the stage. And when she finally gets there, she screams at everyone in the gathered crowd how ashamed they should be for treating her this way and how tired she is of being tossed aside and abused. And even into the 90s, transgender people were prevented from participating in pride parades, even though they were the ones who were brave enough and fed up enough to demand justice in the first place. And the white community, we would do well to remember this too going forward. We did not start the movement for black lives. And in fact, we have contributed for far too long to the perpetuation of injustices that this uprising is fighting against. While we are protesting and resisting and putting ourselves at risk physically, which is important to demand attention, we should also continue to work to rage against the machine of white supremacy that is inside ourselves. The evil out there and the evil in here have the same name. And when we name it for what it is, when we call it evil as it is, when we truly face the situation we are all in, we will know what to do next. We will know how to help and how to stop hurting. We will allow the people whose time has come the people who have been marginalized and oppressed and brutalized for hundreds of years, we will allow them to the center of the stage and we will be brave and we will move aside and we will listen. This next song that we're going to do with the choir is called Ella's Song. It's named for Ella Baker. Ella Baker was a staunch fighter, a staunch advocate for young people and their involvement in the civil rights movement. One who would sit for hours and listen as young people discussed and debated strategies for how they would move next in whatever direction they decided they wanted to go. These are Ella Baker's words. They were set to music by Bernice Johnson Vegan, Ella's song. Now these are some very strong words we're saying here, so it means we need everyone to sing with us. The chorus. I'm going to teach you the chorus. I want you to sing it back to me. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. Now, we That's good, but it's weak. <laughs> There's a lot of things going on in the world right now. There's a lot of freedoms being threatened. Think about it. Here we go. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes good. Now, Carol and I will sing the verses, and when it's your turn, come in nice and strong. Ready? Whenever you are. <laughs> until the killing of black men, black mother sons, 
is as important as the killing of a white man, a white mother's that song. I invite you now to set an intention and choose your word for the week ahead. And you can choose one word or two words or even three words. And if you feel called to, you can put them in the chat and I will read them aloud. Resist. R-E-S-I-S-T, capital letters. Thank you, Bonner. Vocal support of those in need. Show up, speak my truth in love. Acceptance, trust. Organize, capital letters, exclamation point. Positivity. From Ellie, keep on keeping on. Power. Speak up against injustice and oppression. Let me be brave. Let me see my choices clearly. Mercy, capital letters, Terry and Bill, mercy. We will succeed. Amen. Well, thank you everybody for sharing your intentions this morning. May we carry those words and phrases on our hearts this week. And now for our closing hymn, which is one of our favorites and um, it is Lean On Me, We Shall Overcome, sung together. And it's important to note that We Shall Overcome is one of the songs 
that was sung at Stonewall the night, the first night of the uprising. Thank you everyone for being here today. Please join us after this for coffee hour. Um, I will put the link and the password in the chat again in a moment. 
and it will also appear on your screen. If you're calling in on the phone, the number to call is the same number that you use to access this webinar, but the meeting ID is 438-451-134, and the password is Justice, J-U-S-T-I-C-E, capital J. Next week is our annual flower communion, and I am putting together a slideshow of photographs. So if you would send me a picture of yourself holding flowers, I can include you in the slideshow. And my email is minister at kuuf.org. So make sure you send those to me. So let us now extinguish our chalices. May the flame remain in our hearts, a flame of justice, flame of liberation, a flame of pride, and a flame of love, burning bright and strong in the days and weeks ahead. Amen. Ashe, may it be so.
See my choices clear. 